Hello and welcome back to my channel. Or maybe you're finding me for the very first time. Maybe YouTube suggested this video to you or you found it in a search. So if you are new, welcome. I'm Erin. I'm glad you found me. And today I'm going to be talking about books. So this video is for my fellow bookworms out there, but it could also be just for somebody who's looking for good book recommendations or a new book to read. I now do these videos twice a year because I was getting too many books to just do them at the end of the year. So this is going to be my mid-year book review video, although I'm not really a book reviewer. I kind of more just share my thoughts with you, how I liked them, which I guess is a book review, but I'm not that critical, I guess, when it comes to book reviews. So it's all just fun and hopefully we'll give you some new books to check out and read. And if you haven't seen the other book videos that I've done, I will link them down in the description for you as well as try to put them up in the cards so you can find even more recommendations. I use Goodreads to keep track of the books that I've read as well as those that I want to read. So for a number of years now, I've been signing up for their yearly reading challenge. And the way that I like to do it is whatever I read the previous year, so in this case, whatever I read in 2020, I try to add one more book to that to read for the next year. So this year's goal is 33 books, which for me is a pretty lofty goal because that's more than two books a month. And so far, according to Goodreads, I'm on track. As of June 2021, when I'm recording this, I have read 15 books. Some of them are audiobooks, but I still count them because they're still books that I'm completing. And I like to read all different genres of books. While mysteries are my favorite, I also like nonfiction books, chiclet, almost anything. The only one I kind of don't do much of is horror and sci-fi, but otherwise I'm up for reading just about anything. And I'm going to do it a little bit different this time around. Normally I go through and kind of tell you about the books in the order that I read them, but I'm gonna to try to do it this time by how I reviewed them, so or how I rated them. So how many stars I gave them on Goodreads, starting from lowest to highest. And some of them I have the physical books, some I would have gotten from the library, whether it have been, well, most of the library ones were digital or audiobooks. I haven't been able to get to a library to get a physical book in a while, but just so you know that. The lowest rating I gave on Goodreads for this year is three stars. They do out of five stars. So I'm gonna go through all the three star books and then go from there. So the first three star book was Till Death Do We Part by Judy Getch Broadman. I enjoyed this love story. It's set in Maine and includes historical aspects. It also has some mystery and surprises. Judy's writing is so descriptive and I became really immersed in the story and the details and the setting of the characters. So let me see if I can find a little description because my telling you what I thought of it does not give a very good description. Until death do we part, Judy Getch Broadman knits together a young woman, a murder, an unanticipated love, abduction, and the twists and turns that her readers have come to expect. The flaming red-haired tomboy on the swing with the big smile returns years later to a quiet snow-covered village in Maine, where she hopes for nothing more than a final Christmas in the old family vacation home. Yet somehow, Elle Harrington, now a forensic consultant, becomes obsessed with solving the 1800s murder of a woman found buried under the old oak tree outside the house when she was a child. But how does she piece together long forgotten history and hearsay, a forbidden love affair and the contents of a locket that she found wrapped around the woman's bones? And enter another complication, a handsome Boston architect who causes Elle to reassess her life while putting her in danger. Go check that one out. Next for three star books was Ruth Bader Ginsburg, A Life. This was one that my mom and aunt were reading, so we decided to read it all at the same time. And it was interesting to learn more about Ruth Bader Ginsburg and her life. I had gotten a lot of it from the movie, but it was still, I mean, the book is very dense and had very detailed information. 
I did find it difficult to get through at times due to the detailed explanation and legal jargon, but if you do want to know more about her life, I think you would like it. One of Us is Next, which is the sequel to One of Us is Lying by Karen McManus. First, I'll read you the description because I think that'll work better than, than I'll tell you what I thought of it. There is a new mystery to solve at Bayview High, and there's a whole new set of rules. Come on, Bayview, you know you've missed this. A ton of copycat gossip apps have popped up since Simon died. No one's been able to fill the gossip void quite like he could. The problem is no one has the facts. Until now. This time, it's not an app, though. It's a game. Truth or dare. And then it gets into great detail, but I don't want to give too many spoilers. So if you like mysteries, check it out. I would definitely read the first one before reading that one so you kind of have a better idea of what's going on. I mean, while it does stand alone, you could, it just, I feel like would make more sense if you read the first one before the second one. So it picks up with the younger siblings of the characters that were in the first book. I didn't like it as much as the first. I didn't feel like it was as suspenseful, but it definitely did have some surprises and I enjoyed reading it. Next is A Little Bit of Grace by Phoebe Fox, and this was as part of Samantha March's book club for her YouTube members, a certain tier of YouTube members. She has monthly Zooms where she hosts a book club every other month. So this was the most recent book club book that she had chosen. So that is why I read that one. A heartfelt story about family, forgiveness, and starting over when the happy ending ends. And handling it all with a little bit of grace. Family is everything. Grace Adams McHale's mom must have said it to her a thousand times before she died. Before Grace's dad ran off with an aspiring actress half his age. Before only child Grace found out she was unable to have children of her own. Before Brian, her childhood best friend, business partner, and finally her husband, dropped a bombshell on her in the form of her stunning new replacement, which means Grace now has nothing. Until she receives a letter from a woman claiming to be a relative Grace never knew she had, sending her on a journey from the childhood home she had moved back into to a Florida island to meet a total stranger who embraces her as family. So it was a good read. I enjoyed it. It was kind of a little lighter and fun. It did have some surprises, but I would say it's chiclet. And the way I described it is it's about a woman finding her path in life and what's important to her, as well as the importance of family, whatever form that comes in. It definitely kept my interest and I enjoyed following the main character of Grace. I will say the ending left me wanting more. I was kind of hoping for a sequel because I want to see where Grace's life goes from here. Next for the three star books was Incomparable by Nikki and Brie Bella. If you're not familiar with them, they were two WWE wrestlers and have gone on to have lots of success with their own television show, line of products, beauty products, clothing, and now a book. A raw, honest, and revealing co-memoir by Brie and Nikki Bella. Twin sisters, WWE Hall of Fame inductees, entrepreneurs, philanthropists, and stars of the hit E! shows Total Bellas and Total Divas. As twins, the Bellas have always competed. Legend has it that Nikki dropkicked Brie in the womb so that she could make her grand entrance first. But the rest of the world often treated them as identical and even interchangeable. So they decided to do something about it. In WWE, the Bellas accomplished so much together, bringing in young girls and women while building the Bella Army, helping the transition of female performers from divas to superstars. Starring in Total Divas and Total Bellas and founding companies like Birdie B, Nicole and Breezy Beauty, and Bonita Bonita Wine. Though their early journey began with loss, abuse, and plenty of rough times, these challenges shined the diamond they resolved to be survivors and the heroes of their own stories and to take control and responsibility for their lives. Eventually, they would come to show girls everywhere that they can do anything. The Bellas may be identical twins, but as individuals, they have proven themselves incomparable. They also have a podcast I forgot to mention, which I also listen to. I did enjoy this book, and while a good portion of it I did know about from watching Total Divas and Total Bellas, 
there were some new stories that I wasn't familiar with. It was an entertaining read and gave me more insight into these two women. If you are a wrestling fan or a fan of either show, then I think you would enjoy it. Next for three star books was the latest book from Rachel Hollis, which is called I Didn't See That Coming. And I do have to say I didn't love it as much as her other two books, which are Girl Wash Your Face and Girl Stop Apologizing. But when I added it to my to read list, it seemed like a fitting title for me and something that I would be interested in reading. And I had a gift card, so I ended up picking it up and reading it, even though lately I feel like I've heard she's been a bit more controversial, but I still felt like I could get something out of it, so I picked it up. Rachel Hollis Sees You. As the millions who read her Girl Wash Your Face and Girl Stop Apologizing attend her RISE conferences and follow her on social media know, she always wants to see you transform. When it comes to the hard seasons of life, the death of a loved one, divorce, loss of a job, transformation seems impossible when grief and uncertainty dominate your days. Especially when, as Didn't See That Coming reveals, no one asks to have their future completely rearranged for them. But as Rachel writes, it is up to you how you come through your pain. You can come through changed for the better, having learned and grown, or stuck in a place where your identity becomes rooted in what hurt you. With humor, honesty, and true life stories and didn't see that coming, Rachel Hollis shares how to embrace the difficult moments in life for the learning experiences they are, and that a life well lived is one of purpose and focused on the essentials. This is a small book about big feelings, inspirational, aspirational, and an anchor that shows that darkness can coexist with the beautiful. I think the ending of this book was the most impactful for me. It even got me a little bit choked up. I had forgotten that, but that's why I take notes. If you are going through big changes in your life, or maybe had something unexpected happen, I think this book could be useful to you. Next for three stars was Nine Perfect Strangers by Leanne Moriarty, and this one was an audiobook. And I do have to say that I did not like it as much as Big Little Lies. I can't remember if I've read any other of her books, but Big Little Lies is the one that sticks out to me. Could 10 days at a health resort really change you forever? These nine perfect strangers are about to find out. Nine people gather at a remote health resort. Some are here to lose weight, some to get a reboot on life. Some are here for reasons they can't even admit to themselves. Amidst all of the luxury and pampering, the mindfulness and meditation, they know these 10 days might involve some real work. But none of them could imagine just how challenging the next 10 days are going to be. It is kind of a suspense sort of mystery. And part of the reason that I read it now is because I saw that they're making it into a show for Hulu. So I typically like to read the book before watching the show or movie. So since I saw that it was gonna be coming to Hulu soon, I decided to read it. I did enjoy the book, but we'll see if I end up liking the show better. And the final one in the three star category was 28 Summers by Ellen Hillebrand. No, Ellen Hildebrand. I think is how you say it, I'm probably butchering it. But I know I've seen her books around a lot. I don't recall reading one, so if I have, I've forgotten it. But this one seemed fitting because it's called 28 Summers. I read it in summer. When Mallory Blessing's son, Link, receives deathbed instructions from his mother to call a number on a slip of paper in her desk drawer, he's not sure what to expect. But he certainly does not expect Jake McLeod to answer. It's the late spring of 2020, and Jake's wife, Ursula de Gornzi, is the front runner in the upcoming presidential election. There must be a mistake, Link thinks. How do Mallory and Jake know each other? Flashback to the sweet summer of 1993. Mallory has just inherited a beachfront cottage at, on Nantucket from her aunt, and she agrees to host her brother's bachelor party. Cooper's friend from college, Jake McLeod, attends, and Jake and Mallory form a bond that will persevere through marriage, children, and Ursula's stratospheric political rise, until Mallory learns she's dying. 
based on the classic film, Same Time Next Year, which Mallory and Jake watch every summer, 28 Summers explores the agony and romance of a one weekend per year affair and the dramatic ways this relationship complicates and enriches their lives and the lives of the people they love. I did enjoy this one. It definitely kept my interest. I found the story entertaining, but I did find myself a little bit conflicted with this story. I don't want to say too much or give too much away, but I think that was my main difficulty with the book, why I didn't read it higher, was because I just felt conflicted with how the story went and the whole idea behind the story as far as affairs and just the way the whole relationship worked. So I think I covered all the three star rated books, so now let's move on to four star, starting with You Have a Match by Emma Lord. And I think this was a Zoella Book Club pick. Or else, or, or else it was a Reese Witherspoon Young Adult Book Club pick, or it could have been both. But I got it from a book club of somewhere. A new love, a secret sister, and a summer she'll never forget. Also, I listened to this one on audio in case I didn't mention that. When Abby signs up for a DNA service, it's mainly to give her friend and secret love interest, Leo, a nudge. After all, she knows who she is already, avid photographer, injury-prone tree climber, best friend to Leo and Connie, although ever since the BIE, big embarrassing incident, with Leo, things have been awkward on that front. But she didn't know. She's a younger sister. When the DNA service reveals, Abby has a secret sister. Shimmery-haired Instagram star Savannah Tully. It's hard to believe they're from the same planet, never mind the same parents, especially considering Savannah, queen of green smoothies, is only a year and a half older than Abby herself. So, I don't want to give too much away, but there you go. That's the plot of You Have a Match. Oh, I wrote here it was a Reese's YA book club pick. I enjoyed it much more than I thought I would and ended up rating it four stars. I can't do it justice with explanation, so... I read the description, and so I didn't have much else to say about it, but it was entertaining. Again, going into it, I had no idea what to expect. I just knew that it was a Reese book club pick, and they're usually good. So if that sounds interesting to you or you like YA at all, check it out. Next in the four-star ratings was another Samantha March book club pick called I Made a Mistake by Jane Corey. And I did listen to this on audio because I could not get it from, I could not find the physical book. You didn't mean to do it. It was only once, but now he's dead and someone has to pay. In Poppy Page's mind, there are two types of women in this world. Those who are faithful to their husbands and those who are not. Until now, Poppy has never questioned which she was. But when handsome, charming Matthew Gordon walks back into her life after almost two decades, that changes. Poppy makes a single mistake, and that mistake will be far more dangerous than she could ever imagine. Someone is going to pay for it with their life. So it was mystery, suspense, and let's see what I said in the notes. Oh, okay, I said it wasn't exactly a mystery, maybe more of a crime novel. The genre is hard to describe. I stayed quite engaged with this audiobook, so sometimes I have trouble focusing on audiobooks if I get distracted by other things or I'm not completely listening to it. And so, but this one, I for some reason was able to stay more engaged and really focus on. Each chapter is told from an alternating person's perspective during a different time. One is Poppy and the other is Betty. It was a really good book and has more twists, turns, and surprises than anything I've read in some time. It is on the longer side at 464 pages, and while it took me a while to get through, it never felt long or tedious. So if you want to read some good fiction that has lots of surprises, twists, and turns, I think you would like this one. And this could be a long one. I didn't warn you in the beginning, so... Stick with me. Next up for books I rated four stars was a nonfiction book by Jessica Simpson, and it's called Open Book. And it was an audiobook, so it was read by Jessica Simpson. Jessica tells of growing up in the 1980s, Texas, where she was sexually abused by the daughter of a family friend, and of unsuccessfully auditioning for the Mickey Mouse Club at age 13 with Justin Timberlake and Ryan Gosling, 
before going on to sign a record deal with Columbia and marrying 98 Degrees member Nick Lachey. Along the way, she details the struggles in her life, such as the pressure to support her family as a teenager, divorcing Lachey, enduring what she describes an emotionally abusive relationship with musician John Mayer, being body shamed in an overly appearance-centered industry, and going through bouts of heavy drinking. But Simpson ends on a positive note, discussing her billion-dollar apparel line and marriage with professional football star Eric Johnson, with whom she has three children. I'll be honest, I hadn't thought about Jessica Simpson in quite some time. I liked her when I was younger, and, I, and it was the Britney and Christina era. I saw that she had written a book, and I was curious to read it. It was interesting to learn a lot about her life that I had no idea about. It sent me looking at some of her old music videos, and I forgot how good a voice she has. It definitely wasn't an easy road for her. I had the perception of her that the media put out that she was ditzy and a little spoiled and bratty. I know this book is from her perspective, but it allowed me to see a different side of her and relate to her more. If you like autobiographies or grew up with the music I did or liked her in the past, then I think you would like this book. Also rated four stars, The Handmaid's Tale by Margaret Atwood. The Handmaid's Tale is a novel of such power that the reader will be unable to forget its images and its forecast. Set in the near future, it describes life in what was once the United States and is now called the Republic of Gilead, a monotheocracy that has reacted to social unrest and sharply declining birth rate by reverting to and going beyond the repressive intolerance of the original Puritans. The regime takes the Book of Genesis absolutely at its word, with bizarre consequences for the men and women in its population. The story is told through the eyes of Offred, one of the unfortunate handmaids under the new social order. In condensed but eloquent prose, by turns cool-eyed, tender, despairing, passionate, and wry, she reveals to us the dark corners behind the establishment's calm facade, as certain tendencies now in existence are carried to their logical conclusions. The Handmaid's Tale is funny, unexpected, horrifying, and altogether convincing. It is at once scathing satire, dire warning, and tour de force. It is Margaret Atwood at her best. I partly read this because I've heard a lot of hype about it, but also because I know the show is on, I think, Hulu, and I do want to eventually watch it, so I wanted to read the book first. And I'm sorry if I mispronounced any of the things, like the place that they are, the names, because I don't necessarily know how to pronounce them, but... I did find this book interesting. I wanted to read more and felt engaged with it. There were times I was a little confused about what was going on, but I think it's just because of the world that it took place in. I would like to read the sequel, because there is a sequel, and I would recommend you check it out. I don't know if I need to read the sequel before watching the show. I'm hoping the sequel would be like season two or something, but I'll have to figure that out. But I may just read it before watching the show just to be safe. We'll see. I think I covered all the four stars. So now on to the favorites, the five stars. Pretty Guilty Women by Gina Lamana. She is probably one of my favorite authors because she kind of combines romance and mystery, but I never hear her talked about for some reason. I'm not sure why that is. Four women, four confessions, one murder. Something has gone terribly wrong at the bank's wedding. A man is dead. Four different women rush to offer confessions, each insisting that they committed the crime. Alone. Ginger is holding her family together by a thread, and this wedding weekend is not the fabulous getaway she anticipated. Kate has enough money to buy her way out of anything. Well, almost anything. Emily can't shake her reputation or her memories, and she's planning to drown this whole vacation in a bottle. Lulu's got ex-husbands to spare and another on the way, as soon as she figures out what the devil her current husband is up to behind her back. Why would they confess to the same murder? Only they know. And they're not telling. This page-turning novel explores the depths of friendship and the truths we love to ignore. Uh, I had no idea what to expect when starting this book, but I like the author and have enjoyed other books from her. So I rated it five stars because it kept my interest and I continuously wanted to pick it up and keep reading. I think you'd like it if you like chiclet or mysteries. Also from Gina Lamana is Secrets and Stilettos, Murder and Style, number one. This one here. 
So you probably, you might remember, I love her Lola Pink Mystery Series, but she doesn't have any more of those right now. So I had to branch out. So I've started the Secrets and Stilettos series. Only read the first one, but would like to get more. It's the way they describe it. For fans of Sophie Kinsella and Janet Ivanovich, fashion can be deadly. Jenna McGovern's strappy shoes and sundresses are not going to cut it when she makes the move from Hollywood Hills to Blueberry Lake, Minnesota in the stone-cold dead of winter. A former stylist to the stars, Jenna's determined to bring the latest red carpet fashions back to the Midwest in an effort to revive her mother's floundering thrift shop. When Jenna finds out, her first client is Grant Mark, the best man in a high-profile winter wedding. She's thrilled. However, when Grant gets a little too handsy in the dressing room, Jenna is forced to fend him off with her stiletto and send him packing. While she's glad to be rid of the difficult groomsman, it's pure bad luck that Grant is found dead later that afternoon from a high heel to the throat. What's worse is that the attractive chief of police is convinced Jenna's the one who put it there. If Jenna doesn't clear her name quickly, she'll not only lose the chance to style the biggest winter wedding Blueberry Lake has ever seen, but her mother's thrift store will go under for good. And Jenna will be stuck flaunting the worst fashion of all time, a neon orange jumpsuit. It really held my interest. It was a fast read for me. It was a good mix of romance or chiclet and murder mystery. I, as I said, really enjoyed everything that I've read from this author and hopefully I'll be able to get the sequel. But if you like Chiclet, Murder Mystery, and want a combo, check out Gina Lamana and check out Secrets and Stilettos. All right, we're almost done. I thank you for sticking with me. Next in the five stars is from another one of my favorite authors, Emily Giffen, and this is The Lies That Bind. In the irresistible new novel from number one New York Times bestselling author of All We Ever Had and Something Borrowed, a young woman falls hard for an impossibly perfect man before he disappears without a trace. It's 2 a.m. on a Saturday night in the spring of 2001, and 28-year-old Cicely Gardner sits alone in the dive bar in New York's East Village, questioning her life, feeling lonesome and homesick for the Midwest. She wonders if she'll ever make it as a reporter in the big city, and whether she made a terrible mistake in breaking up with her longtime boyfriend, Matthew. As Cecily reaches for the phone to call him, she hears a guy on the bar stool next to her say, don't do it, you'll regret it. Something tells her to listen, and over the next several hours and shots of tequila, the two forge an unlikely connection. I really enjoyed it. It's not a typical book that I would think of Emily Giffen writing, it's not a mystery th or thriller, but it still had a lot of surprises, twists, and turns. If you like books about relationships, chiclet, some surprises, I think you'll enjoy it. We made it. If you stuck with me till the end, thank you. I really appreciate it. Hopefully you got some good book recommendations out of this. Leave me your recommendations down in the comments because I'm always adding to my TBR list always looking for new things to read because I want to be constantly reading because I do enjoy it. It's a great escape. So leave me your recommendations below and give this a thumbs up if you enjoyed it, if you love reading as much as I do. And at the end of the year, I'll have my yearly book wrap up for you. But as I said, in the meantime, you can watch all the other book videos that I've done if this wasn't enough for you. I thank you for watching and supporting my channel. I know I've said it before, but it really does mean a lot to me and I greatly appreciate it. I hope you have a great day, enjoy reading, and I'll see you soon. Bye.